Hello there, YouTubers. Yep, hello there. Lots and lots of reflections today. Welcome to another Dr. Cassant video. Today we're going to take a look at a recent flea market find, the Fisher model CRWZ1 double cassette deck. And no, this is not just a double auto reverse stereo cassette deck. Oh no, this is a professional digital reference by Fisher. Oh yes, Fisher definitely was a fan of big names, and since the studio standard label by the time this cassette deck came out was pretty much worn out and uh, known for the fact that uh, it in fact had nothing to do with uh, studio equipment or studio standards, they came up with this name. Let's uh, wake this thing up. Got it at a flea market, uh, paid 10 euro. Now, um, looking at the thing from a bit of a distance, you may say, well, it says digital reference, but really it's just a cheap piece of black plastic junk. Well, surprise, surprise, it isn't. Uh, the faceplate is made out of metal, except for this uh, lower part, which uh, I guess is a little hard to make out of metal. Uh, these side bits right here, believe it or not, they are actually real massive aluminum. These screws are not just plastic decoration. No, those screws are what holds the faceplate on. So uh, that's a bit of a surprise. Wooden side panels, of course, that's not real wood, that's just chipboard, but um, that is still at least somewhat related to wood, so yeah, it's not too bad. So let's zoom in and take a look at the features and functions has a remote pickup sensor up there. I did not get the remote along with the unit. I uh, don't know if it was an optional accessory or what. Uh, power switch, headphone jack, have a nice golden Fisher label down there. And uh, this is uh, yeah, this is one of the major complaints with this thing. I, I'm sorry, I have to rant about that a little bit. Now, the cassette doors you may say, well, they look as if they would come off. No, they don't. You cannot slide them off in any kind of way. The screws are not decoration, however. Uh, no, the problem is you have to take the screws out from the back. These pieces right here are just the pieces that hold the screws in place. So essentially you have to take off the faceplate, you have to take out the mechanisms, and uh, all that great fun to uh, to get the door to come off. So you can probably imagine cleaning the insides, cleaning the heads and capstan pinch rollers. That was some really great fun. And uh, I actually <laughs> I actually had to hold the Q-tips with a with a pair of needle nose pliers uh, so that I could reach deep down. Uh, you know, far enough to reach everything. So that was a big annoyance and the thing was pretty dirty, both inside and out. It was owned by smokers, so that required a lot of disassembly and a lot of cleaning. Anyway, um, both decks are auto-reverse and both decks have an amorphous head. And uh, yep, that is something else. Since you cannot take the doors off, and since they don't have any kind of a cutout, it is impossible to readjust them. And uh, I do have a feeling that the cassette deck might benefit from doing so. But it's not too bad. There is the eject button for the deck 1, and down there you can see something that's not original. Unfortunately, the eject button broke uh, somehow. Um, when I first had the cassette deck, I think it was not broken, so it probably broke in, uh, in transportation. But basically what happened was the mounting for the eject button on this side broke off. So the thing would just be pretty much completely loose in there. Uh, since you can't really reach that spot without going through some major, major trouble, what I did was I drilled a hole, and what you can see down there, a silver thing, 
is a screw I put in, a long screw that presses up on the eject button where it's broken out. So the eject does work. Moving on, we have the dubbing, and this does not have any kind of a safety interlock. If you have a recordable cassette in the recording deck and a cassette in the playback deck, you press one of these buttons and it starts right away. We have a space pause. Now that is not a pause from space. That actually means that it puts a bit of a blank recording when you uh, press it onto your uh, recorded cassette have uh, the pause and record buttons right here and then of course the standard uh, func function buttons for both decks right there over here another deck button we have only for the playback deck the intro scan and the blank skip in the center as you can see we have a nice big fluorescent display and uh, now as you can see, it says dubbing high speed blank skip intro scan uh, in there, uh, which doesn't really make sense because none of those functions are activated at the moment, as you can clearly see. Uh, now, what happens, this is a bit of a cheap solution or, uh, well, it's, it's probably to, to make it look fancier. Basically, all that happens is if you activate one of those functions, a little red arrow appears in the display. So uh, that's a bit of a cheap solution. Only the A deck or the one deck has a counter. We have right here counter reset direction mode and then we have something that is called MRSS and that is a very advanced music search system. In fact the most advanced one that I've ever come across. So we're going to take a look at that later on. We have a uh, balance input level, that's all standard. We have a timer, standby, MPX filter, noise reduction, and that is another unique thing. As you can see, it not only has Dolby B and C, it also has DBX noise reduction. So that is interesting. It also has a direct position, and I have to admit I have absolutely no idea what that does. Um, it appears to be the exact same thing as off, but um, I don't think they would have put it there if, uh, if it would not uh, have any kind of a uh, special thing to it. But anyway, uh, those are all the features and functions of this deck. So now let's go ahead and get it going. Now, a few people have been complaining about the fact that I am not really playing any music in my presentations. Uh, the problem, of course, is the copyright. It is quite a bit of work. It takes up quite a bit of time to get something license-free into the appropriate format to play it on this deck. Um, and also, um, it doesn't make sense. I mean, you're listening to this all through speakers, and that's all being picked up by the camcorder microphone, so it, it just doesn't have all too much to do with the original uh, sound what you're hearing on your end. I mean it does sound good but anyway you get the point. I did do some uh, recordings on this cassette deck. I found out that the noise reduction systems are not doing too much of a great job. The best one of, uh, of all of them is the is probably the DBX because um, it does sound uh, the closest to the original uh, signal. Uh, Dolby B and C, for some reason I'm getting quite a bit of a loss of trouble on those. Quick sample that I recorded from a CD. Oops. Let's go ahead and play it back, have a quick listen. Okay, that's all I'm going to play for you. I'm sorry, but um, anyway, uh, you get the idea. It does sound surprisingly good. I mean, especially for a dual cassette deck, usually those aren't that great, but uh, this one is, believe it or not. 
Moving on, both of these cassette decks in this unit have a function to them that the other cassette deck cannot do. In case of the record deck, it's quite easy to guess. It can record. The playback deck obviously can't do that. However, the playback deck can do something that the record deck cannot do, and that is music search. Yes, interestingly, music search is only available on the playback deck, which basically tells you that the Fisher engineers designed the playback deck to be used for any kind of playback, and not just for playback during uh, dubbing. Anyway, um, let's take a look at the search mode. It's quite advanced on this cassette deck, I can tell you that much. Uh, now, however, this demonstration is probably going to be a bit of a problem because the playback deck has some, uh, well, it has a bit of a mind of its own. Unfortunately, uh, it likes to randomly go into stop mode or randomly select uh, other functions than the one that you have selected. So that's a bit annoying. But anyway, playback, as we press fast forward or rewind during playback, we get the display, ASF, auto search function. You can see a blinking one. That means it's going to skip one track. Press plus. As you can see, we can skip quite a few more tracks. Press the minus. You can cancel that. Of course, it also works into the uh, to the backwards direction. Let's see, there it goes. Uh, try that again. Okay, there it goes. As you can see. However, here comes the most complicated part of this demonstration, I guess. This cassette deck can not only do the usual boring music search. No. It has MRSS. I have absolutely no idea what that stands for, but it means that you can program this unit just like you can program a CD player. Yep, that's quite a unique thing. So let's go ahead and uh, try that out. We press check. can have a program, just a regular one, P. PA means you're having your program on the A side. I guess you can all tell what PB stands for. And you can also have it play everything. Anyway, let's go ahead and go with a normal, boring program. Press the plus button and press the set button. Now, uh, the second song on this cassette deck isn't on this cassette is not that great, so let's go ahead, skip that, go to three. Four is great as well. Five and six, however, better forget about it. Seven is great. Eight we don't like, so better go to ten. And since this does not have any more than eleven tiles on there, we just press run. Now it's going to rewind, go all the way to the beginning of the cassette, where it can find the first track, and then, well, I guess you can all imagine what's going to happen. It's going to uh, go ahead and uh, play back only the tracks that you've selected. Of course, it will only work if you have used the space pause feature while recording the cassette. I guess that's quite obvious. So, that's how that works. I don't think we need to go through all of that and uh, yeah, there it randomly press the stop again. So anyway, uh, you can press clear. At least in theory, you can press clear. It's interesting. Clear. Okay. To get rid of that all. So, that's that. That is the MRSS. Another interesting feature this cassette deck has requires a look into the deck. This is a playback deck, obviously. It's the exact same setup on the record deck, except it has a record play head and an erase head. But the thing that I'm talking about is uh, sitting down in there. Let's take a look. Right there. You can see there is a little extra head that is looking up through a little window on the cassette. What that does is it determines if there is a magnetic tape or not. 
And uh, that is for the quick reverse feature that this cassette deck has, but uh, for some reason does not advertise on the front. Basically, on a usual cassette deck with auto reverse, um, when the cassette reaches its end, it's going all the way through the leader tape, then reverses, goes through the leader tape again, and then it continues, finally. This cassette deck is able to skip the leader tape because it has that additional head that uh, can tell the logic circuitry in there if there is a magnetic tape or if it has already reached a leader tape. And once the magnetic tape is gone, it just reverses. It's that quick. And here we have the inside of the Fisher CRWZ1 cassette deck. There we have that uh, strange looking outboard transformer right there. There it is. It does say dynamic power supply, but it can really only be a transformer because we have all the classic components on the circuit board right there. We have fuses, rectifier bridges, smoothing capacitors, voltage regulators, so that can really only be a transformer inside of there. It is a metal box, very solid. As you can see, they did this quite nicely. We have the power supply circuitry and the control circuitry all right there, off by itself in this compartment. And then we have the audio circuitry right there. Right there we have a shielded box. That's where the oscillator is sitting. So that doesn't have any bad influence on the audio. The mechanisms are, well, a little cheap. They are very plasticky, but uh, they are two motor mechanisms. I had to lubricate the capstan motors because they were quite noisy. And um, instead of going into there with, uh, with the regular oil can and making a huge great big mess, I went ahead and got myself this. Just fill that up with oil and uh, of course you can then get into the most difficult spots. So that was a great idea. Um, of course, I have circuit boards up front. This is where the uh, level and balance regulators for record are sitting, and as you can see, that is shielded as well. So, Fisher may be a rather cheap brand, but uh, looking into this cassette deck, I really have to say this is not all that cheap and it's actually made really well. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.